Multiplay 3.0 Tutorial 8 MIDI Music Cues. So the MIDI Music Cue icon actually inserts a MIDI sequence cue into your cue list. I use this to coordinate lighting cues with particular audio track where there are multiple lighting changes happening during that audio track. It makes it easier to figure out rather than doing a whole bunch of MIDI command cues and trying to figure out the timing as far as how many minutes between this cue and the next cue that has to be fired, etc., etc., which takes a lot of calculation. This is a much easier way to do that. I create a MIDI sequence file that matches up with the times that I want the uh, lighting to change with that audio file. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in the latter part of this tutorial right now. But just know then that I have a series of note on, note off commands, so it would be like a MIDI file that are being played back alongside of my audio cue. So this enables me to synchronize my lighting cues with my audio because they're both going to play at the same time. My cue sync up here, if you look, it's set to start play, so it'll fire this cue and then it'll also fire the next cue so that they run side by side. Here's my lighting software over here. I've programmed this to recognize the note on and off commands coming from this MIDI file to actually press the next button and advance through my lighting cues. So, using my show control software, I'm playing back the MIDI file, which is controlling my lighting, and at the same time as playing back my audio file, which enables me to totally synchronize my light cues with my audio file. And just watch it run once. Keep your eye on the lighting changes happening over here. So the lighting changes, you can see the cues sync here being played, MIDI information being sent, audio information. I could have continued this. As you look at it, I had fired a total of about 10 cues or 11 cues to get through here, but I could continue going and I would make an outline for how many times I wanted my lighting changes to happen and exactly where they're going to happen timing wise in that file. So now I'll show you how to create that MIDI file. And if you take a look here, if I go to MIDI sequence here, you can see that I went to my file and actually picked up this QSync MIDI file. And that's what's been put in there. And that is actually the MIDI file that's being played back. Now, you do need a way to create that MIDI file outside of Multiplay 3.0. You can't create that MIDI file inside this program, so we have to use another program to create that MIDI file that can be then utilized by Multiplay 3.0. So we're going to be creating a MIDI song file that's basically going to send note on and off messages at precise times. So I can align these with my audio cues. And I'll use the note on, note off messages to trigger slides or lighting software so I can have light changes. First of all, we have to set down our exact times where we want these lighting or slide changes to happen. So I have Audacity here and I have loaded up my audio cue that I want to align my lighting cues with. I'll just listen to it for a moment here. I picked this particular piece of audio because it has definite impact points where I want light changes to happen. So now all I have to do is first of all I go down here and make sure in my readout that I've got it set to seconds. So it's seconds and milliseconds it's set to that. So now I can click where any of my hit points are and this is going to happen at 1 second and 398 milliseconds. 
Next hit is going to happen right here. I'll click there. Four seconds, seven milliseconds. Next hit here, six seconds and 660, 617 milliseconds. So you get the idea. So I'd go through and actually physically write down all of these hit points where I'd like them to occur. Then we're going to go create our MIDI file that's going to match up with that exact timing to send a note on, note off commands with that. Now, I've always been in the search to find an easy way to do a MIDI file without having to go into a third-party sequencer program or audio program to do that. And I think I finally found a little program that's going to work for this. It's called MIDI Quick Fix. And it's basically a little Java program. You do have to get permission for Java to run on your machine, but I haven't had any, any problems with it uh, having any viruses or anything like that. So I'm going to bring up MIDI Quick Fix. Now, we have one little dilemma we have to solve. With the audio program I'm just using, we're talking about seconds and milliseconds. MIDI looks at music as being beats and ticks. So what I've done here in this particular piece of MIDI music, I've set the tempo to 60. So it's 60 beats per minute, which means basically each beat is one second. So this makes it easy to align this up with our second timing. Now the other thing you have to do a little bit of a quick math here. Each beat is going to be split up into 16 ticks. It's because there are eighth notes and 16th notes and 32nd notes, etc., etc. So if you think of it this way, each beat is one second and that's split up into 16 parts. So eight ticks would be a half of a second. Four ticks would be a quarter of a second and two ticks would be an eighth of a second. So you can kind of align it that way. Now the only drawback with this program is that you cannot create a MIDI file. You have to download a MIDI file and then fix it. Hence the name MIDI Quick Fix. So you've got to download just a kind of a template file here and I'll post this. You can either contact me and I'll send you a copy if you give me your email or I'm going to post this on my website where you can uh, download it. So I basically have a little template file here. Track summary, it's just got one track in it. And when I bring up the track editor, you can see it just has a little bit of information here. Uh, copyright, you just have show control, track name, track one. This is the most important part here. This tempo has to be set at 60 so that it's going to run at one beat per second so we can align it. And then it has one music cue in here. It's a, C, a note C1 at a velocity of 64 and it's happening right at the beginning of the MIDI file, okay? At zero, 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 zero beats and zero ticks. So now we just have to go through and insert our notes. Now, in my case here, I'm going to be using the same note over and over to trigger my go button on my lighting software. So I'm going to have a cue list on my lighting software, and I just need to send this same note on off command to trigger that go button uh, repeatedly as I'm working. So I'm going to click on my insert button over here, and I just move my insert button to the side so I can see what's going on. Now, when I look at my timing sheet, my first hit was going to be at one uh, second and 398 milliseconds. So we're talking about one beat. So click over here, double click, just type one. That's your beat field. Now I have to do ticks, which is the second field here. Ticks, it's asking for 398 milliseconds. It's almost a half of a second, so almost eight. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's just make it seven. And I'm using the note C one octave first octave and the value of 64. I'm going to go through and put in all of my note on commands first but realize that you also have to put note off commands because you cannot send the same note repeatedly unless you turn it off and on. Think of it as being at a, a piano keyboard. You play the note by pressing down on the key and then you release it so that you can play it again. So it has to be note on, note off, note on, note off repeatedly. But the easiest way to do this is first put in your note on command. So there's my first hit and I'll say insert and you'll see it occur in here. It's at one beat and seven ticks which would be one second and almost a half a second. My next one occurs at four seconds and 100 milliseconds. So I'm going to type up here in four seconds and 100 here. 
that's like about a tenth of a second. So I'll, I can just say basically two ticks and say insert again. So there we are, four and then two ticks. And my next one's going to be at six seconds and 570 milliseconds. So I'll type in my first field here, six. 570 is just a little bit more than a half a second. So I can say half a second would be eight ticks. So I'm going to say nine ticks in here and say insert. And then so on, I'll go and fill in the rest of these values that I need. Okay, so I've got all my note on commands put in here. This is my timing that matches up with the timing that I figured out for my audio file. Now I've got to go back in and put in note off commands. So I'm just going to highlight my first one here. And I'm going to switch this from note on to note off. I'm going to go see what has to be the same note because we're canceling that and just put in a value of zero. Now I can see that my timing for this is zero. So basically I just want to fire the note off command maybe about half a second later. It could be one second later if we wanted to do. So I'm going to bit zero and then um, a half a second later here would be uh, eight ticks. So I'm going to say eight and say insert and notice that it inserted right after there so it put it right in where it belongs in the file um, let's see our next one is at one second and seven ticks so uh, we need to go about a half second later i can actually go two set uh, two seconds and seven ticks so i'm going to do two and seven ticks and say that, insert it. You can see now why I like to do all the note on commands and just go back here and put my note off commands in. This one's at 4002, so I'll just make it at 5002. So it's like a whole second later, the note off command, five, and then two here, and insert that one. Uh, next one's at six and nine ticks, so I'll make it seven. And I could say five ticks for that purpose. Uh, next one's at nine and five ticks. So I'll make it at 10. And it's already set at five ticks. So I can insert that one and so on. So I go down the whole uh, file here and fill in all my note off commands. Okay, so I've finished putting in all my note off commands. Just go back through your file and make sure that you do have a note off command for every note on command. That's important. Or again, you won't be able to repeatedly fire that cue. So it looks like everything is great here. Um, so I'm not going to overwrite my template file that you downloaded from me and I'll just do a save as. So I'm just going to put this on my desktop here and call it Hero Sync. And that's going to be my MIDI file. And oh, file type, make sure that we do Hero Sync.mid. So now I'm going to bring the MIDI file in alongside of my audio file so they can play side by side and execute my light cues for me. I already have my audio cue loaded up here. Now I'm going to put in my MIDI song file, which is this. And I'll pick that from the top, my Hero Sync MID puts it in. I'm going to move this up into the first position. If there is a little bit of a timing delay between the two, remember you can adjust that in the beginning of the cue files here. But it seems like these always work best if you put the MIDI file first, followed by the audio file in here. Now, we have to make sure that they're going to play at the same time. So in my first cue, which is my MIDI cue, I'm going to select Start Play. So it starts this cue, but it also goes to the next cue and plays the next cue at the same time. The next cue is just a standard Start Advance. So we should be good to go. I've already set this up with my lighting software so that my lighting software is going to recognize that note on, note off command, and it's going to actually press my next button on here uh, to get started. So let's see what we have. I'm in run mode with my lighting software, and now I'll just fire this cue, and you should see the cue list start and progress through here in time and in synchronous with the audio. And as you see, it's progressing through. If you do see any timing issues, you can always go back into MIDI Quick Fix and adjust the timing of those MIDI cues a little bit.
and there you have it. We're synchronized with lights and sound. I like to do it this way rather than having a whole bunch of wait cues on here because it's only two cues so the person actually running the program doesn't get confused by a whole bunch of auto follow cues that are in the list. However, I am going to do a tutorial on how to do this using auto follow cues to do the same idea. One more very important point. I had mentioned earlier in the tutorial that there is a bug with the program that you cannot use MIDI song files and MIDI commands going through the same interface. So I imagine if I'm running my LED and cue list, there'll be times when I'm going to have uh, an audio file with multiple light cues, but then there might be uh, a time when I just need a single light cue and I'd like to use the MIDI command but you don't want to do that because it will kind of disable the sequence here. You'll actually have to physically close up the software and restart it or else it just won't, won't work again. So the workaround is this. Don't use the MIDI command. Just use the MIDI song file. Just create a, a MIDI song file with one note on and off command and use that as your next go command. Okay. That way you can avoid having to use the MIDI command here. Hopefully they'll be able to fix that bug in the future so you can be able to use a mixture of simple MIDI commands and then MIDI song files within the same queue structure and going to the same interface and it won't cause the program to lock up.